Today I'm going to share with you a few methods that are essential when it comes to drawing vehicles in perspective. Now, most of these methods and drawing techniques that I'll be discussing in this video are things that I had learned from Scott Robertson's How To Draw book. I've mentioned this book many times throughout videos on the channel. It's one which I often recommend to anyone who is interested in perspective drawing. In this book there's a lot of examples where he shows you how to approach drawing cars, even planes and other vehicles and so today I thought I'd go over the steps that are involved in doing this as I draw some myself. One of the first things that's worth mentioning is the convenience of using grids. This is something Scott Robertson covers on a few earlier pages as he also discusses camera lenses. The hardest part when it comes to drawing vehicles, for me at least, is positioning all of the wheels in the right places and I'll discuss more on that later but using a grid which also includes the wheels like the ones that I had just shown makes this a lot easier. Of course this relies on you using some 3D modelling software to build the grid then you can view it on various angles and in some software even change the camera lens. Here on screen, I've had a go at making some of these grids in SketchUp, which is only a basic program, but it does the job. I've even created a, a series of these grids and posted them onto the Patreon page for you to download and use yourself. Now when making these grids, whether you are drawing them from scratch or modelling them like this, it's good to know that as a standard rule, many cars have around the same distance as three wheels put together between the front and rear wheel, and in many examples, he makes these grids 2.5 wheel distances wide. So he's using ellipses here, circles viewed in perspective, to measure distances when drawing. And remember, ellipses essentially describe the square bounding boxes that we draw them within, which means taking this approach is ideal when it comes to constructing and drawing these grids in perspective. Even without the assistance of any pre-made grids, you know, this helps to draw them directly, which I'll get into later in this video. In terms of using these grids, I'd recommend printing them out to use as an underlay when you are drawing or if you are working digitally, then you can have them on a separate layer and work over them. These are also useful because they deal with the ellipses for the wheels which are always a pain to draw, especially on different angles. Now because these grids establish the perspective by positioning the horizon line and vanishing points, again that makes the next step a lot easier. Once you have your grid set up, you can start to block out the body of the vehicle. That's something that I'm going to cover in a second video because in this one, I want to talk about creating these grids and doing this without the assistance of any pre-made grids as an underlay. You know, how do you go about drawing something like this freehand from scratch? Thankfully, at the start of the book, Scott Robertson covers a lot of methods and perspective drawing techniques that are useful and I suppose essential when it comes to doing this. Now before you begin drawing, you at least need an idea of what it is you are drawing, right? You know, what angle do you want these vehicles to be drawn at? Again, the grids are helpful because these give you a, a clear idea of how things might appear, but here you have to do this yourself. There are some rather complex methods for estimating accurate angles in perspective, but that's uh, another video for another day. For now, just try and visualise what it is you are drawing, or alternatively, if you are working from a photograph of a car, let's say, then you know what angle you need to be drawing this at. I like to start by drawing a line which establishes this angle. This would be across the length of the car. Now at the front of this there would be a wheel and somewhere at the end there would be another wheel. To construct this I'll start by drawing out a bounding square which from the angle I'm trying to draw this on appears more like a rectangle. Now these top and bottom lines for this square are extending to what would be a vanishing point somewhere off the page. That's why you can see these tapering inwards towards the end here. There is some estimating to do here as well. You want to judge this line which establishes the depth of this square. We are drawing all of this freehand so it's not going to be perfectly accurate as opposed to using a grid. Now this positions our front wheel at one side and we'll draw an ellipse within that soon because now I need to position the rest of the wheels. 
Remember when I said that there's around three wheels worth of distance between the front and rear wheel? Well, that's good to know here because I'm trying to work out where to draw that rear wheel. Rear wheel is <laughs> quite hard to say, but fortunately there's a useful technique to do this. There is a method for duplicating squares in perspective and I've covered it many times throughout videos on the channel but it's really useful to know especially when it comes to drawing vehicles like this and so I'll go over it here. If you already know this then just skip ahead. Here on screen I've drawn out a square in perspective, so a rectangle. Now I divide this up. I already have the top and bottom lines extending out back to the vanishing point. From the middle of this square, I also draw a line back to that vanishing point as well. Now I draw a line from the bottom corner of this square through the point at which that midway line meets the edge of the square at the side I'm duplicating this, and I extend this until it meets the line at the top. At this point I can then drop down another vertical line and I have duplicated the same square next to this that is at the same size but foreshortened. And this can be repeated as many times as you want. So this is how I do that here. I'll divide up this square that I want to duplicate in order to draw the necessary construction lines. And then I take a line from this far corner through the point at which this midline crosses the edge of the square. I can continue to extend this line until it meets the line converging at the top. At this point I can then drop down another line to the bottom here and I have now duplicated this square. The reason why this is a good technique to know is because it also accounts for the foreshortening that occurs when objects are viewed in perspective, so here I do this three more times and you'll see how these seem to reduce in size as they recede into the distance. So I've duplicated this square four times here and so the square at the back is where that rear wheel will be. These are our three wheels between, obviously I haven't drawn any ellipses yet. So at this stage we've established the length of the vehicle as well as positioning two wheels at one side and now the next step is to find the wheels at the other side. So remember another standard rule is to have these cars be 2.5 wheel distances wide but it's a bit tricky to work this one out due to us not having a square to duplicate in this direction nor do we have anything in this direction yet. Again, if you have a, a photo of a car for reference, then you can get an idea of the angle this needs to be at, but this line would also establish the left vanishing point. Again, this one establishes the right. So I've drawn this out here, and again, in the same way as we did at the start, I need to draw out another square to establish the size of a wheel. The width is something that I estimate here. This square again describes a wheel, and seeing as this is 2.5 wheel distances wide, I'll duplicate this two times here. Again, just pay attention to the direction of your lines. Once you have one line heading to a vanishing point, the rest of them need to be directed towards it as well. After this second square, I only duplicate half of that, but I do that the same way. So that's 2.5 wheel distances, and this line that I've just drawn will be the edge of the front wheel at this side. Now because I've established the position of both a left and right vanishing point through doing this, it's easier now for me to draw additional lines and estimate their direction. Now I just need to draw what I have at this side over at this side again, and to do this is a lot easier because I can transfer these distances across. To do this, I'll extend out a line at the top and bottom of this across its length like so. Now over at the back, I'll then draw two lines at the top and bottom of this across its width. Remember, these would be directed to a left vanishing point, so be sure to look at this line at the front to get an idea of the angle of this. Where these cross, I can then add a vertical line, and so here's our box I was talking about. To transfer these squares for the wheels over to this side, I can take some lines from these points across, again heading to what would be a left vanishing point, and where these meet, this line at the bottom, is where I then draw in a vertical line up for the edge of these squares.
I now have all of these wheels positioned, or I now know where I need to draw in the ellipses for them, which I do here. Notice how when I draw in these ellipses, I divide up these squares. This is because these ellipses are tangent to the bounding squares. I've discussed this in other videos that I've made, but that's it. That's how you go about doing this freehand. I've now positioned and drawn in all of the wheels. So that's how to construct and draw these grids from scratch and I'd recommend practicing this, you know, try drawing this on different angles, but we'll call that stage one and in stage two, covered in the next video, that involves blocking out the body of the vehicle by constructing boxes at different sizes and I'll also continue with these same examples that I have drawn today. So with that being said, I hope you found this helpful and look forward to the second part. If you did find this helpful and please leave a like, it helps out the video and with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.